It is a story as old as time itself. In the beginning, there was silence. Until one day, somebody made a sound. Welcome to the Steve Ken Guitar Channel, a channel where we give you amazing facts about music. Well, they say that music is the great uniter, an incredible force, something that people who differ on everything and anything else can have in common. And indeed, today, as we start our journey in search of the answers to the question, how did our ancient ancestors compose their music? One thing that is uniting us through the journey is the music which we are listening to. It is a question that challenges the memory itself and it takes us back both in time and history as we try to find clues that are left behind that show us how the ancients composed their music and what was the inspiration behind it. And we invite you to join us through this amazing journey and hope that by the end of it we will have answers to our question. Throughout many generations of the human species, people have composed different kinds of music from different genres and also composing simple versus complex music. But the baseline of the question is how did they compose this music and what was their basis? Because remember, in those days there were no recording instruments so how then did our ancestors come up with patterns of tones and make chords of course in this channel we are not going to dwell much into the musical history but we will give you a clue on what really encouraged or inspired our distant ancestors to compose their music Welcome to the Steve Ken Guitar Channel, a channel where we give you amazing facts about music in a way that will leave your mouth wide open. And today is a special edition since we take you back in time to try and find out how the ancients created their music and what was the inspiration behind it. So keep tuned till the end of the video and we promise you you'll be entertained and you'll definitely learn a lot. Shepherds fight to their flocks, horsemen and infantry kept time to music, and women learned music at home. The art of singing to one's own string accompaniment was highly developed in most societies of our ancient ancestors. History tells us that in some societies that were more advanced in civilization like the Greeks, a relationship between music and mathematics, envisioning music as a paradigm of harmonious order, was observed by philosophers. In most communities, People have competently trained how to play instruments. They also trained how to sing and dance to chorus. Instrumental music or the singing of a hymn often accompanied regular activities, including acts of worship that were done daily. Although extant musical scores are rare, incomplete, and of relatively late date in most communities, abundant regional references shed more light on the practice of music, its social functions, and its perceived aesthetic qualities. But today, the question is, how did our ancestors compose or come up with tunes and melodies? And that is what we are here to show you about. It is a question, one that challenges memory itself. We do know that during that time, there were no recording instruments. So how was one able to compose music and commit it to memory? A good question indeed, but we can get clues from history itself. But when it comes to specific songs, however, 
the most, the oldest known examples are relatively of more recent age. The earliest fragment of musical notation that is known currently is found on a 4,000 year old Sumerian play tablet, which includes instructions and tunings for playing a hymn honoring the ruler Lipit Ishtar. But for the title of the oldest extant songs, most historians point to Gurian hymn number six, an ode to the goddess Mikal that was composed in Kinefron by the ancient Gurians sometime around the 14th century BC. Apart from a near set complete of notations, it includes specific instructions for how to play the song on a type of a nine string line. Nearly two millennia ago, the Taoist philosophers proposed music as a potent cosmic force capable of expanding human intelligence and enhancing communion with the non-human world. The connection between our music, our emotions, and the world at large is often considered as duality rather than intricate triangle that it actually is. These elements are only connected to nature while we also have a deeply rooted emotional connection with nature. The music of the natural world, and by this I mean the bird singing, the howling of the wind, and the sound made by animals, provided, provided a foundation for basic elements of our human evolution, making our connection with both music and nature innate. Other ancient Chinese writers further emphasized on the need to listen to nature. The tongue is as one of the qualities of the seed. These two philosophies of historical Asian culture, emphasizing on the importance of nature and listening, parallel the ancient gardens created by Chinese stories to improve physical, mental, and emotional health. Although there was no scientific evidence to support such claims, the philosophers of the nation world were the scientists of their time, critically reflecting upon experience and observation in order to drive nature. The connections with, between nature and its music that these philosophers advocate has relentlessly maintained its grasp on the human soul for thousand years later. The philosophies of David Dunn and Pauline Oliveros, two modern composers from America, mirror the ideas of those. And here, once again, we see some aspects of the Chinese culture. Remember, as we said, the Chinese Taoists were among the first people to have made a discovery of connection between nature and music, and that nature inspired so many aspects of music, from creation to its practice, including choosing to listen to music. Musical abilities taught to have evolved before actual language as there is a strong relationship between music, symbolism, and body movement that will indicate it as a form of communication more basic than language. Ethnomusicologists 
John Beckley further proposes that a non verbal to linguistic mode of thought and action existed before language acquisition in human history. In fact, history tells us that the Kutu and Tutsis East Africa incorporated the ultra low communications of elements into the sound of the stories. On the other side of the globe, many communities, especially seafaring communities, have listened to the whales, the sound of whales from the hearts of their boats for thousands of years. Composers, musicians, storytellers and poets have recognized this for centuries exploiting this inherent connection in order to convey emotion and meaning to their creative work. We are told that composers throughout many generations and from regions across the world have always sought to put emotion into the listener through the portrayal of nature in music. As you have seen, nature has been the inspiration behind most of the music over the several years. Till date, it continues to inspire many musicians all over the globe on different types of music. What do you think about the video of how the ancients created their music? As usual, feel free to leave your comments below and the likes for this video. Remember to click the subscribe button and the notification bell for this channel so that you don't miss any entertaining videos from this amazing channel. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. Yeah. Now we are done with our part one of how the ancients composed their music. As usual, leave your comments and questions below. And also if you have a topic that you may want us to talk about, as usual, you can leave your comments below. Indeed, it has been a nice time and now it is time to head back home.